by the way, these hearings are going to have three parts. They're going to look at what was going on before the attack. They are going to look at what happened during the attack. And the third phase will what will be what happened afterwards. Before it was a series of bad decisions. During it was a series of blunders. The after this is all over is as troubling as anything. The lengths that they went to, from the spin to the bottomless pit to the blackout on eyewitnesses, still in other names, is the stuff that turns paranoids into prophets. I mean, the cover-up, the attempted ways in which this was, was swept under the rug, all of it's fascinating. And literally, it's hard to separate it out before, during, and, and after. But the during and the after is the real problematic area here. Now, the Situation Room is the government's nerve center for intelligence and crisis support deep down under the White House, 5,000 square feet. It has the most sophisticated high-tech. It has sensors to prevent bugging. It has the ability to monitor situations anywhere in the world. It has seating that accommodate the National Security Agency, Homeland Security, the White House Chief of Staff, the official White House photographer. On May the 2nd, 2011, 15 officials and the White House photographer watched the killing of Osama bin Laden in the Situation Room. On September 11th, 2012, no one was there, apparently. The Situation Room was not used. Nobody went there, apparently, evidently, where four Americans were killed. You know, the old saying is that success has a thousand fathers and failure is an orphan. So we will see what, what happens here.